So there are four different Barry Harris scales. I'm going to talk about these scales in this video. If you follow my channel, you know I've been talking quite a lot about uh, Barry Harris stuff lately. In this video, I want to take a look at those four scales, how we can use them. I'm going to explain what they are and how we can use them in a specific, specific chord progression type situation, kind of like I did there in the beginning. So there are a few chord progressions that we're going to look at and the specific way that you can use the Barry Harris scales over those progressions and specific tunes I'm going to talk about. And uh, yeah, there's just so much to get into. So let's just get right into it. So first off, we need to know what the scales are. First, we have uh, what he calls a major sixth diminished scale. So if we're in C, the scale is this. Hang on, you're saying it's just a bop scale. It's a major bop scale. Yeah. You could think of it as two chords, right? A C6 or a tonic and a B diminished. Put those two chords together, we get eight notes. So what's the difference from a bop scale? Well, the bop scale, there isn't any difference really. There's the same, they're the same notes, but when we talk about bop scales, we talk about a specific way of practicing, I think. Here, it's a little bit different. We're thinking about th those two chords. There's so much to say about these scales that you, so many ways you could practice them. But uh, I'm gonna focus on one specific way, but just, for example, if you're playing thirds, regular diatonic scales as thirds, for example. They're all thirds, but if you do the same thing with a Barry Harris scale, it gets different. They're not all thirds, some of those are seconds. So it's more difficult in that way. But that's not what I'm gonna talk about here. I'm gonna talk about these two arpeggios and how we can use them to create lines. So before we do anything else, we should just make sure that we can play those two chords as arpeggios, ascending and descending. So I ascend with a C6 arpeggio. And I go up to the B and descend the diminished arpeggio. Then I do the inversion of the C6 and the inversion of the diminished chord, which is symmetrical. And then I keep going. Okay, the second scale is the same thing, but minor. And that creates a minor six arpeggio and the minor arpeggio. we have a dominant scale but with a flat six so he calls this a seventh diminished scale first one was major six diminished scale then minor six diminished scale I guess they're called that because they create a minor six chord and a diminished chord and together they create a scale. So the diminished, the seventh diminished scale is a bit weird. Because there's no A in there. Usually on the C mix so right there's an A. Normally you would play a bop scale like this. Over 
third dominant chord. So here it's where it's a little bit different than the Bob scale approach. That creates a C7 and the B diminished. So it's a, bit, a little bit more uh, unusual perhaps. Then even more unusual is the 7th flat 5 diminished scale. What? I haven't looked at this myself a lot, like a lot, but we're, we'll take a look at it. That creates a C7 flat 5 arpeggio and the B diminished. So now, see how I have to think where I'm doing that exercise. We're, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that exercise in a second. I have to really think about what I'm doing. So it's not about speed and moving your fingers really fast. It's more about understanding harmony. So you have to kind of think when you're practicing this way, which is really good. So let's go back to the the easiest one. C, the C major sixth diminished scale. That's arpeggios. So I play a C6 ascending and B diminished or D diminished depending on how you look at D7. Then I play the inversion. And then I keep going like that. Alternating between the major 6 arpeggio and the diminished arpeggio. So how should you practice this? You should do exactly that. Imagine that you're a sax player or, yeah, sax player is good. What, what's the lowest note? Well, we have this E and the highest note on this guitar is a D. So I should be able to go from E, so the lowest arpeggio, that would be a C6 first inversion. That's the lowest arpeggio and this is the highest, it's D diminished or F diminished, or A flat. So I should be able to go from that down all the way here. And I think I mentioned before I had a teacher once who used to say that. Imagine that you're a sax player, you're going from the highest note in, of your register to the lowest note. And I don't really care how you get there, just get there. the guitar presents all these kind of problems here, issues, because there's so many different ways that we can, uh, different fingerings that we could use. And I could just tell you how I did that, but I think it's better that you figure out your for yourself. Just to get started, I did make a PDF of one example of how I do this. So I'll put this on my Patreon page. So I'll just play through that for you here. So here I'm playing like this.
So that's just an example of how you can get from here to there to get you started. But don't take my word for it. Don't take my fingerings. Don't use my fingers just because I use them. So the way I, you should practice this is you should do this in all 12 keys. That might seem daunting, but I mean, you can do a key, one key a day, 12 days. You've done, you've gone through all 12 keys from the highest note of that key and the, your instrument to the lowest. I mean, there's no way that that's not going to help you. If, that, if you do that for 12 days and then the other scales as well, for sure that's going to help you a lot. This is great for many reasons because we're getting out of the boxes, right? And we're thinking about harmony, moving harmony. So I recommend that you do this away from your instrument as well. Do this in your mind, mental practicing. So, and ear training, you should maybe try to sing it with note names and then come back to your instrument. A really, really good thing to do, if you can, is to do it on a different instrument. If you're playing another instrument, that's a huge plus. Or do it at a piano, right? You don't have to do it with good fingerings if you're not a piano player. I couldn't do it with like proper fingerings, but I could do this on a piano with like one finger or whatever, do that and then come back to the guitar. That's amazing because now you know you have what you're supposed to do in your mind. The music is in your head. You just need to figure out how to do it on this instrument. That's exactly how it should be. As opposed to if you are just looking at my fingerings and just memorizing finger patterns. That, that could be a good, maybe at first, but you definitely want to practice it so that you can hear it and think it. So I'll put that on my Patreon page. Now, where do we use this? So imagine that the chord, it's almost like we have playing C major six to G7, G7 flat nine. Because uh, this diminished chord is like a G7 flat nine over G, right? So if we have a C to G kind of progression. That's a, this is where you can use that, right? So I'm just playing like this. That's like two beats per chord. But if I do this instead, now it's a bar each, which is uh, more uh, applicable. So that could be any kind of major vamp, right? So even if nobody's playing that dominant chord, you can still imply it's still kind of there you can apply it especially in minor now so the first chord c6 is the same thing as a minor right so i could play c a minor same chord c6 a minor and then d to g then we have a one six two five kind of you know, chord progression, like rhythm changes. Or even. Sorry. Then try to come up with variations.
So this works over rhythm changes. So many tunes have that kind of chord progression. Obviously it sounds a little bit silly if I'm just playing. Ultimately you want to be able to make music out of, it, out of this, but it's, it's a good thing to practice like that to get the kind of moving harmony. It's a different approach than just running C major scale, right? So I was hinting at that tune Swing 42 there by Django Reinhardt. So it has more chords in it, but you could play that tune just like one, six, two, five. Then the whole thing in E major is, that's the B section. And then back to C major. So this stuff could really work over that tune. Like. So that's an example of how you can use that major six diminished scale. And remember that, or I should also mention that the major six diminished could also be used over minor chords because the C major six is the same as A minor. And the minor six diminished scale, which we're gonna look at, is also a dominant chord. Because like if you have, for example, a, a G minor six, it's kind of the same thing as a C7. So I'm gonna get back to that. So I should mention where I'm getting this from. I'm getting it from this book, The Barry Harris Harmonic Method for Guitar by Alan Kingstone or Kingston, Kingstone. And uh, as you can see, I don't have an actual physical copy of the book, unfortunately. I made a video like a year ago, I guess now, where I talk about Barry Harris as chords. And I mentioned in that video that I don't think there is any book by Barry Harris. So many people commented that there is a book by another author covering this st stuff for guitar, actually. So that was a big surprise and it's impossible to find. It seems to be out of print. Don't ask me how I found this, but I found a PDF. I will, as soon as I find, sometimes it pops up on Amazon, I will purchase one as if I can, or if I find one. So it's a great book, it goes over so much of this stuff. A little bit surprised that it's uh, the author, I'm not familiar with him actually, he's from Toronto and uh, I used to live in Toronto for many years and uh, I thought I had a pretty good uh, understanding of the jazz scene there. It's not a huge jazz scene. There are a lot of guitar players in Toronto, I guess because of uh, the legacy of uh, Ed Bickert and uh, Lenny Bro, I don't think Lenny Bro was from Toronto, but there's quite a few good guitar players in Toronto, actually. Lauren Lofsky, for example. But I've never heard of this uh, guy and it's uh, never heard of the book, but uh, that's where I'm finding this stuff. Okay, now let's do the same thing with minor. So instead of C to A minor, D minor, G7, it's gonna be C minor, right? To A minor, 7 flat 5, D minor, 7 flat 5 to G. 
instead of. Notice that this chord, C minor 6 and A minor 7 5 5, it's the same chord, right? It's the same voicing, I mean, it's the same, same chord, just different inversions. So the A minor 7 flat 5 has a tonic function here. The D minor 7 flat 5 has a subdominant function, which shows you that a minor 7 flat 5 can have be either a tonic or a subdominant in a minor key, or actually in the major key. But I, dig I digress. So let's, uh, let's change keys. Let's go to G minor. That's a one, three, two, five, sorry, one, six, two, five progression in minor. Let's try that. I'm alternating the G minor 6 to F sharp diminished or A diminished or whatever. G minor 6 inversion and next diminished chord. So we're doing the same thing as before, we're just changing the major 6 arpeggio to a minor 6 arpeggio. And by doing that, we're creating a minor situation. So I don't have this written out, and that's not because I'm lazy necessarily, but I think it's very important. That I thought a lot about this because I know that if I make a lot of PDFs and give you a lot of PDFs, some people, they like that and I understand that. I get a, more Patreons and stuff like that. but. I'm not doing you a favor if I do that in this case. Some cases that's good to do that, but here I think it's very important for you to do this yourself. If you do that, if you go through the process of figuring it out yourself, that's going to help you more. Because my my channel and this uh, my videos, they're not about quantity. I try to make it more about quality. And that might sound pretentious, but if I make a lot of PDFs and I pr you print it out and it's all written out for you, that would be quantity, but not necessarily quality. But if you go through the process of learning this stuff, figuring out this stuff yourself in all keys, your own fingerings, not the fingerings I tell you, you write your own fingerings. That's quality. If that does that make make sense? Okay, so what are some tunes that have that kind of situation? So I was hinting at that tune, uh, Johnny Come Lately. Nobody plays that tune. I don't know, it's a great tune. Or it could be... Um, Let me know if you can think of more tunes. So even if the chord, those chords are not there, you could still imply that. Same as before. It's all depending on what kind of what style you're playing. If you're playing softly as in the morning sunrise, sometimes those chords are written out like that, but nobody really plays that because of today we're we're living in the post uh, bop kind of era. So you have the modal jazz that changed everything. So people wouldn't necessarily play those chords unless you're playing in a kind of a very straightforward uh, 
kind of traditional situation. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you're playing with the more contemporary players, they would probably play, treat it as more of a modal situation. And you can still imply this kind of stuff every now and then, but they wouldn't base their thinking around this. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, work on this stuff because I think you can tell it sounds pretty, you can make it sound very hip and kind of beboppy. So you could treat it even as that, uh, see here, let me think. It could be this, right? That A minus seven five, five could be an A7, which is the same as E flat seven. It's a sub five, right? So then I could play C sharp diminished. So, I could hint at that if I wanted to. That note, the C sharp, is also the blue the blues note the c sharp diminished arpeggio is also one note different from the g minor 6 should also mention that if we go back to the previous scale the major 6 if i think of this as a b flat major Six B flat major six diminished scale that works. Now instead of I get this instead of I get this. That also works. Instead of the six, I get the flat seven. So instead of instead of this. So there's just one note different. Isn't that kind of fascinating? So this could also be the same thing I did here, the G minor six. Could be used over a dominant chord. It's a little bit, you have to be a little bit, it's, hmm, it's a little bit more uh, sophisticated, but you can think of G minor six is very close to C seven, right? So, so imagine you have like, G minor to C, right? Like honeysuckle rose. You could use the same approach here. bit a uh, little bit um, more how should I put it uh, a, a stretch for the ear but you can totally do it all right moving on another situation you will often find in jazz is that instead of let's say a G minor going to D7 it's a G minor going to a flat 7 right it's the same thing so D7 dominant or A flat, there's sub five. It's just the same chord, different bass notes. So. That means that this stuff works over that progression as well. Let's change keys again. Let's go to F minor. So F minor six to G flat 13, this, this turn. by Sonny Rollins. Let's play it. 
played like that. So that works even though you're saying, well, there's no, there's no F sharp in that diminished arpeggio, but there's no, there's no C in it either, right? If I take a diminished chord like this C sharp diminished, if I drop any of the notes a half step, I create a dominant chord. So if I drop the C sharp, I get a C sharp. If I drop the G, I get F, so F sharp. I could also drop the B flat to A and get an A7. It's a little bit more of a stretch in this case. And if I drop the top note, I get an E flat 7. So within the diminished scale, there are four dominant chords hiding. Again, it's a little about that's a topic in and of itself, but again, it's something that's fascinating. So I'm just showing you that that F sharp dominant chord is hiding in this diminished chord. That means that I could alter the diminished arpeggios to accommodate that note. So if I change that G to an F sharp, it sounds like this. That sounds uh, pretty cool. And then you could kind of go back and forth between that note. You could kind of, you could kind of mess around with that note. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of a night in Tunisia. Same situation is just a reversed order. So the, so this is like an A7 going to D minor, right? It's just a sub five. Let's try that. Melody goes. That's that flat two or whatever at the end there. So I could go like. And then instead of right. quite a few tunes, quite a few situations. So there's a lot of Django Reinhardt stuff showing up in this lesson. And another tune that you could do this, use this stuff over is this tune. Sweet Georgia Brown. Because the B section, that's the A section, right? And the B section is, uh, minor if we're playing in G which uh, Django enthusiasts do most of the time because we play guitar not horns so E minor to B7 that's the 
last section of uh, of that tune. So I'm gonna loop that section so because we don't have time to play the whole tune. So <laughs> So it works really well that you could also do what we did before make it a sub five so I think that's pretty cool I heard uh, I was listening to a version with uh, Winton Marsalis was playing there it was his sax player I don't know who he is but he was doing that and it sounded amazing so instead of just playing these arpeggios try to come up with ways to play the, the arpeggio so it sounds more musical than just sounds very patterny right so one great pattern is uh, this Django Reinhardt like I think it's a Django Reinhardt like so it's like E E minor 6 to the diminished but so I guess it's a it's like a doubling voicing, doubling a note. Super cool, you play it with two fingers like Django. Django Reinhardt is a very good example of somebody, if not the best example, of somebody who takes like arpeggios and chromatic scales and all stuff and turns it into music and turns it into something that is uniquely. Django Reinhardt. So he's got his his hallmark or his personality is very comes out in the music. So I'm not doing a good job of describing it. But I think you know what I mean. Okay, now we have the two weirder scales left if you're still watching. So now uh, these are I'm not as strong with myself. I'm uh, kind of new to this stuff. But I was in a teaching program once where they told me that the best teaching happens when the teacher is discovering stuff together with the students. So I'm going to discover this with you right now. I'm not sure that that's the best teaching, but that's what they said, but they talked a lot of nonsense there anyway. So who knows? There's one situation where you can use this idea and that's uh, if you're playing a tune like Well You Needn't by Thel Thelonious Monk, right? It's in F, but we'll do C. Where it's just like that, C, D flat. I've always been, I remember, I was always confused in what to do with that kind of chord progression and I so this is not at all I, I'm not saying that this is what Thelonious Monk does I'm just saying it you can do this it's one way to tackle this uh, kind of tricky chord progression it's, I mean it's only two chords but it's tricky because you get kind of trapped in just like one chord and another chord one chord and you want to be able to play something on top of everything right so so the C if I do that and then the B diminished that is pretty much the same thing again right that it's that it's like a D flat 7 flat 9 so let's see what that sounds like Kind of 
works. Let's let me try some more. I think that kind of works. So I should have done it slower, it's a little bit too fast. I'm actually gonna slow it down a bit. the major seven sorry the the seventh flat five so I'm gonna drop the fifth to a flat five close to a whole tone scale. There is actually a whole tone scale hiding in there. So if you're uh, in whole tone territory, you get kind of definitely something you can use if you want to sound Thelonious Monkish. So I'm just kind of hoping that this is inspiring, that you can explore these ideas yourself and uh, that it sparks some uh, maybe thoughts and how you can use this scale. So I'm just kind of touching on this stuff right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there because this is already kind of a lot. And uh, this PDF is on my Patreon page, but I didn't make a whole bunch of PDFs for this lesson for the reason I explained earlier. And uh, this book, not in print, uh, fortunately, but you can probably find it if you're good at that stuff. And I might make a lesson on this book later, especially if I can find a copy. I'm not done with it yet. I'm kind of, uh, I have a few pages left, but it's so much more than I've talked about it. It's like so much stuff. Don't forget to check out things I learned from Barry Harris, one of my favorite YouTube channels. And yeah, let me know if you have a tune that you think this works over really well, like similar vamps. And uh, yeah, hope you like that. I shall see you next time. Later.